Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. It is Snapshot 18W50A and this one is the last feature snapshot for the year of 2018. Mojang announced it themselves on their blog post where they shared lots of the information about this snapshot. One of the things that we can see straight away are the new village buildings. We are in a Taiga biome. The village structures here have been updated, so have the desert ones. We'll be checking out both of those in detail in this video. Also, this structure right here might look familiar to you if you follow my second channel. Over there, I post things like when the devs tweet out screenshots of what they're working on, and this is something we saw just a couple of days ago, and now it's in the game and we get to play with it. There is also the bell here, which we've seen before. If I right click on it, it's got that little animation. It's supposed to make a sound, but I'm hearing nothing. I'm wondering if there is something wrong with my game. But my sound is on and everything is fine. So some observations about the Taiga village structures right here. These little pumpkin patches that you find in the middle of the biomes, sometimes they're hay bales, sometimes they're melons. And over in this area, we get little stone formations. Also, once again, the loot inside of these buildings matches what's around here. So we've got the saplings and we've got the sweet berries. And also, the beds are always purple. So that seems to be the bed color for this village. Now, this structure is pretty sweet looking. It's got a balcony. I like that. And on the inside, some decent loot. You can see here, you're able to get diamonds from some of these new buildings. So that's cool. And in and around this area, we will see some villagers hanging out. And they have new skins. And you may be aware from Minecon Earth that these skins will be dependent on what type of village they are from. Well, I've been doing some poking around. And these villagers have tags that we can break down and see exactly what they're about. So the villagers have changed, not just aesthetically, but their trades are different as well. Again, later in the video, we'll dive into this so much deeper. But the first things that I've discovered is that there are three important tags. One of those is what type of profession the villager is. So these are all leather workers. The second thing is what biome is that villager from? This one is from the savannah, this one is from the plains, and this funky fella over here from the desert. Then they have yet another tag, which is what level they are. And this can only go up to three. So there are three levels of trading, at least for the leather worker. That might be different for the different professions. So you can see at level one, it's got some basic trades. At level two, we introduce some enchantments. And level three over here, you can trade a saddle. And I have no idea what causes a villager to go up through these levels but hopefully later on we'll find out but as of right now we are going to investigate the functionality of the blocks you see right in front of me we have the barrel the smoker and the blast furnace we've seen these before but now they have UIs and they have their functions added. So the barrel is for storing items. The smoker, I believe, is for cooking food. And this one is for smelting metals faster. But I'm going to figure out all the details and give you the rundown on these three blocks. I decided to change location for the next part of this video. And I've got to say, these desert villages are looking really cool. Loving what's going on here. But we're here to check out these new blocks. First of all, crafting recipes. This is how you make a blast furnace using a little bit of iron. Then we have a smoker, which is just some wood surrounding a furnace. And then we have the barrel which is as follows, so slabs and regular wood. Now this is slightly cheaper than a regular chest and it has some interesting properties. It doesn't interact with redstone, so if I put stuff inside of it, we don't get a redstone signal from this comparator. We also can't move it with uh, pistons or anything like that. It does work with hoppers. If I'm to put a hopper, or sorry, an item in the hopper at the top or the side, it will flow into the inventory. The hopper can take items out of this barrel as well. I think the key difference between it and a normal inventory type is that you can put a block directly above it and you can still access the barrel. So it's cheaper than a chest. I think the texture is pretty reasonable and you don't have to worry about having a block directly above it. So the patch notes on the website say that the smoker is for cooking food faster than a furnace and that the blast smelter is for cooking metals faster than a furnace. So the furnace is still able to do both of those things. As you can see, we have some iron in our inventory, so we can smell iron, we can cook the food, and we can make glass in here. If we go and check out the blast furnace, you'll see it's only the iron that we can make, and in the smoker we can only cook the food. Look at that fancy animated texture. I have just conducted a little test and thanks to the power of video editing, I've measured that it takes 10 seconds to smelt an item in a furnace 
and it is exactly half for both of these. So this will double your smelting time, meaning it takes five seconds to smelt each of these items. And I know some of you are going to ask, yes, this works with hoppers to feed in the items, to feed in the fuel, and to take them out just like a regular furnace. Having had a poke around in the village buildings, it seems that lime green is the colour for the theme. Also, lots of flower pots and cactuses. The loot chests have cactus in them as well. I've learned something else during my time here, and that is that cats hate rabbits. And I'm not sure if this is a new change or just something that I've forgotten I've known about. But uh, yes, they will attack the rabbits, which naturally spawn in these biomes of course. I think they are a little afraid of me at the moment. There we go. Yep, that one's showing us exactly what's going on. And while we're talking about cats, that cat right there is Jelly. Good Times with Scar's cat has been added to the game. I'm going to put a tweet on the screen for you because I believe that one of the textures has been changed. So this cat right here uh, looks like jelly, the one from the screenshot we saw just a moment ago. However, I'm pretty sure this one had a different skin in a previous snapshot. So I think one of the other ones have been removed as its cat ID is 9. And these went all the way up to 10. And the 10th one is the one that you find in the witch's hut. And if you go any higher than that, the cat is actually invisible, but it's still there. You can see it's got a shadow. So there it is, jelly in Minecraft, the ninth cat from the numerical list. I have just spent a little bit of time doing some air quotes coding and let's see what this does. Aha! Brilliant! Unfortunately, they're all facing the wrong way. Oh, we're going to have to make some changes to this. I need to make them silent as well. Wow, they're making a lot of noise. Well, there it is, my friend. The 60 new villagers all compressed into a wall together. <laughs> It is kind of hilarious. Let's take a, a closer look at these quickly. So there you have it, all of the different villagers. If you want to know what each of these are, over here we have the cartographer. As you can see, its trade is pretty much the same on each of these, except for the uh, random amounts. The next one is the toolsmith. This one has an enchanted shovel trade. As you can see, the enchantments are random as well. Then we have the farmer, the cleric, the leather worker, the fisherman, the weaponsmith, the librarian, and this one right here is the Armourer, and I find it a little bit odd that I can't open the trades with this one because I found out its name by spawning them in a village and being able to trade with them and see what their name is. This one, however, it even says on the patch notes that you can't trade with with this one, and it is the Mason. Then last of all, we have the Butcher, and, well, not last of all, I guess. This one's the Nitwit, which, of course, has no trades. We now have three walls of villagers for the three different levels they can have, and I thought I was going to be saying this needs a deep dive and some research and investigation, but oh no, it looks like this stuff has been really nerfed. There is actually just one thing I can't figure out about these trades, and that is how they go from being a level 1 villager to a level 2 or a level 3. So having done a bunch of trading and poking around, it seems like most of the villagers have two trades and occasionally just one trade. And as you can see, these trades are locked out. Now, I've done some trading taking one item at a time and also shifting them out. And at no point do they ever seem to refresh their trades and regain the ability to trade again. Now, going up to level two, I've done the same thing again. This level worker, though, has just one trade at level two. And again, doesn't seem to be any way to get them to unlock. So once you have a villager, you effectively have a finite amount of trades with them 
And here's our level 3 level worker. And yes, again, the trade has been locked out. So it looks, as I said, finite, and it looks like the whole system has been nerfed at this point. So the villager spawn egg hasn't changed despite there being new information about the biome type, the trade and the level and this information will all be saved if a zombie villager were to attack it and convert it into a zombie villager as well. When you cure that villager it will remember all of its trades supposedly. This led me to do an experiment which was to take the wall of villagers that I created and changed them to zombie villagers. Now if you are playing close attention you may have noticed that for part of the video there are actually two rows of desert villagers. That was just something I didn't notice until later so I went back and edited this. And so at first I thought oh this is interesting like sometimes they have the same skin and eventually I realized it's random. I think there are 12 of these in total and it seems to ignore what biome they're from. It just randomizes the profession, which is also strange considering it's supposed to save that information. There have been some updates to pillagers and patrols. This guy right here is a patrol captain. And if you kill one of these in the wild, it will give you between one and three bad omen levels when you kill it. They can also now spawn inside of these outposts. And I've only seen just the one in this area. And oh no, look, another one has spawned down here. So we've got a second one inside of the structure. Perhaps there is a rule in place that these ones only spawn when they're in the structure. But anyway, if you kill one of these that is on a patrol, it's between one and three levels. If you kill one that's spawned inside of a pillager outpost, you can only get one level of bad omen. It's now also been set up so that illager beasts appear on the second wave in a village of a raid. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to see last week's snapshot. There'll probably be a link to it on the screen or something. Then we have witches, which will arrive at the fourth wave. And unbeknownst to me, the witch has a new skin. Look at that. She's wearing a hood. Oh, that's really cool. I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> and then we have the evoker as well. This guy will appear on the final tenth wave. This video is getting on a bit, isn't it? I've been trying to cover everything in detail with these snapshot videos and they're getting longer and longer and we're about to get to the villagers real soon. What I need you to do is go to the comments down below and let me know if you like the longer detailed snapshot videos. That feedback would be really valuable to me, so thank you for doing that. By the way, we got some new textures. I've got horse armor down here that's changed. These blocks, the boats, even the wood has very suddenly changed. And I made a video on my second channel that I'll link to at the end of this one where I went through all of the supposed textures that had changed. We're cramming in a couple more things before we get to the village buildings. I found a reddit post saying that this was the supposed sound that the bell would make. I don't know if that's 100% true but there you go that's what the bell could supposedly sound like and the other thing is not a new command. As you can see on the locate list there is a new village and this is for if you want to find a snowy village. So if I teleport here, turns out I am mistaken. Well last time I tried this it just happened to take me to a snowy village. So let's go locate again. There is new village, there is also regular village so I don't know why there's two of them if there's no difference. So on to the buildings, but first the jigsaw block has got on a new texture. I really like it. It kind of fits in with the structure blocks, which is possibly what you could expect. This first one right here is the lamp for the desert, and then we have two different animal pen designs. This is the armorer's building, which makes use of granite, and of course the new granite wall block. Then we have the blacksmith. This is the butcher's building. There's some clay inside of here, and of course a smoker. Then we have the cartographer's building, which is really nice. I'm loving the build designs here. And then we have a couple of farms and then the fisher building, which we saw a few of in that villager earlier on. And again, check it out, the barrels are here. Then we have the Fletcher's house with a large tower on the side of it. We've got a large farm here and then we have a library building. This is the Desert Mason and then we have two medium house designs. I'm very fond of this second one. Really liking the detail with the buttons here. This is the Shepherd's House. It appears twice due to a typo. Both of those structures are the same. Then we have the small houses. There are actually eight of these in total. And this one I wouldn't describe as small. It's actually quite tall. And at the very top of the staircase, there is a loot chest to be found. This is the Tannery. A interesting structure. As you can see, it's got three doors down the bottom. 
and two up the top. It's then followed by the temple. This is like a miniature castle and on the inside some glazed terracotta which we'll also find in the second design of the temple. This one being a little bit larger. Again there's the brewing stand and there's some terracotta. We then have the toolsmith which is a house on a hill. I'm really liking the design of this. Smithing table on the inside and then we have the weaponsmith building and in here there is a loot chest that perhaps provides some better items. I see some gold in here. And last of all, we have our four desert meeting points. These are basically the centers of the town. This one here, as you can see, has a rather large structure size, but they all, I think, perform the same sort of function. Did I say there were four of them? There's actually three, and we can see some terracotta over here, as well as sandstone walls. And that's reminded me that this building back here has taken advantage of these smooth sandstone stairs. As you can see, they are different from regular sandstone stairs. Now we move on to the Taiga village. This comes with some decoration structure files that are used around the villages, not the most interesting things. Then we have an animal pen and then we have some armorers. This one seems to be identical to this one over here. Sometimes there are just files misnamed or duplicated etc. This building is the butcher's house. You can see the smoker on the inside of it then we have the cartographer building another decoration structure file and then we have the fisher cottage once again there are barrels here there's always barrels and apparently there's lots of water on the inside this is the fletcher's house there's a fletching table we see the purple again and this loot table seems to be linked to this building because you can use those items to make arrows then we have two large farms and we have a library building here with a little balcony and also a lectern on the inside. This is the mason's house. There's a stone cutter on the inside. Then we have three medium houses. I like this one. It's like a small house propped on top of some cobblestone. This one here is quite tall. And then this one's got a double entrance. There are three meeting points for this type of village. And they're probably the least interesting of all, I'd say. We have two designs for the shepherd's house. This second one seems to be the first one, just slightly elevated. You can see the looms on the inside. And then we have a small farm and then there is a total of five small houses. And usually there's about eight in total. So these bunch are a little less. This one is the tannery and then probably the most impressive of all structures. We have a temple. It's got a brewing stand on the inside and I like the scale of that one. Very nice. This building here is a toolsmith and then last of all we have three weaponsmith buildings. Once again, they're almost identical. No, they are identical. These two right here are definitely identical and then we have this alternate one at the end. Well, my friends, we have two more class of villagers. We got swamp villagers at the top, jungle villagers at the bottom. I've got to say, I love their leafy hats and shoulder pads. That is so cool. And I find the purple an interesting color choice for these villagers, considering they're from the jungle. Now, the reason I didn't discover these sooner is because I just picked the villages that currently spawn in the world. So this is probably a hint that villages in the future will spawn in swamps and jungles as well. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of this video. If you have enjoyed it, then leave a like. It will support the channel. As always, thank you for doing that. And if you're not subscribed and you want to catch these snapshot videos, if they make a snapshot, I'll be making a video. That's how it works. So subscribe for more of these videos. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next year with another snapshot video. Bye-bye.